Right. One of the most important parts of first aid is, is preventing the control of, of bleeding. Cuts and, and lacerations happen, whether that's from a, from a weapon, but from a dog fight, from the, uh, from the landscape edging in your backyard, you know? So <clears throat> whenever you're dealing with, with a bleeding issue, whether that's on the legs, you always wanna put direct pressure either directly on the wound. Indirect pressure would be applying pressure up on the arteries. The arteries in the front leg are up inside. And the same with the, with the back legs, just inside the thigh here where you can feel a pulse. You can put pressure here to help stop bleeding further down. Uh, is there another one too at the base of the tail, the caudal? Or, there, uh, is, there is a, um, a pretty good sized artery at the, on the underside of the tail. Okay. Uh, that, that may help for those, those tail bleeders, especially with uh, dogs with really aggressive tails, the Great Danes and things that will sometimes smack tables and the corners of walls and end up with at the end of their tails bleeding, and that can be really problematic to stop. It's not serious from a blood loss potential, but it is serious when you've got white walls and a dog wagging its tail. Uh, so direct pressure is best. If you've got um, you know, a really deep wound, of course you want to make sure that you're not bitten too. You need to right. take care of yourself first. Um, you know, direct pressure when you can is, is the best way. Sometimes using a towel or something like that to give yourself a little broader surface area and to put pressure over, over a greater area is helpful. So if, it, if a dog does nick an artery, like you pointed out the location of the arteries, mm -hmm. why is it important not to peek at the wound, right? Just keep putting... Just put, just put pressure because if there's any scab that forms as the body starts to contract that artery and you agitate that at all, then you start the bleeding cycle all over again. All right, and everybody, this is Dr. Mike Lasasso. He's out in the Dallas area. And tell me what it is about emergency medicine that you're so intrigued. You've been doing it for a number of years. I, I do love emergency work, um, fixing things that are broken and helping these guys when they're really in trouble is, uh, is a great reward. And how important is it for a person to have a pet first aid class? I mean. Well, I think that anybody, everybody should take, if you've, if you've got kids or even by yourself, you ought, to, you ought to know a little bit of basic human first aid, but you owe it to your pets to know what to do in an emergency situation until you can get them to me. All right, that sounds good. And, all right, so now the last one, it'll just be here. We'll get to see if they'll both come here. Come on, guys. Come here, buddy. Isn't what she are you doing, Maddie? Isn't she cute? <laughs> this dog, when there's when You're a hot mess. She goes, when we're cooking, mm -hmm. all the dogs are looking at you at the kitchen counter. This is Maddie mm -hmm. looking at the floor. Yes. She's the first one to get a treat. That's right. So on the last one, um, it just um, I just wanted to say introduce yourself and then um, just say, you know, you know if, do you want to say anything about shock or would you rather do something about a poisoning, maybe the symptoms? Um, well, poisoning is going to be so... It's so hard. So very vague. Yeah. <laughs> Because it just depends on how many yeah. of any of a thousand things they uh, they get into. Would you be willing to say anything about pet first aid for you or just our relationship? I mean, you've read the course book. It's um, getting better and sure. better. Okay. But just maybe we'll do that thing about the importance of taking a pet first aid class. Mm -hmm. And this is Maddie and, and, and Casey. So I'm going to introduce you on this one. All right. Okay.